Alrighty. Today we're back with some more extra credits. This time, Kosro Anushiralan, Trolling Justinian, Extra History Number 4. Um, it's time to do a little bit of trolling on the Eastern Roman Empire. I'm curious, now that we'll be able to hear things from Kosro's side, how different it's going to be from what we heard uh, when they were doing Justinian's side of the story. Um, before we dive in, though, make sure you go and check out the links in the description box below. I would love it if you joined the Discord and followed me over at Twitch. Now that all that's out of the way, let's just go ahead and dive right in. Truce signed by Cosro and Justinian in 532 CE had no expiration date. This peace was meant to last forever. But after that nonsense the Romans had pulled with that barbarian adoption proposal, mm. Cosro knew better than to trust them. Bum, 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 bum. Justinian had been meddling in his affairs, and Cosro had proof. His loyal Arabic ally to the south had sent Cosro a copy of a letter he'd received from Justinian, promising him gold if he would switch to Justinian's side. Then a group of Turks had arrived in Cosro's court, with another letter that they claimed Justinian had sent, telling them that Rome would be grateful if they invaded Iran and created some havoc. Cosro sent copies of these letters back to Justinian and warned him that if this behavior continued, their treaty was over. But Justinian denied everything. Hey, K-Man, these letters aren't real. Chill out. <laughs> Yet the hits kept on coming. Envoys from the Visigoths they stumbled into coming. Cosro's court, begging for help against Romans who had been beating them up over in Italy. They said, do you really think that a man as greedy and ambitious as Justinian won't try to conquer your country as soon as he's done conquering ours? They urged Cosro to strike, right now, while the Romans are still tied down in the west. News of Justinian's abuses also trickled in from Lesser Armenia, where the Romans had begun demanding taxes so high that the Armenians rose in revolt. The first yes. Roman general sent to quell them tried to turn them against each other, only to screw it up and get killed in the first major <laughs> battle. The second Roman general lured the Armenians into a parley before treacherously killing their ambassador. The Armenians Oh fled yeah, that confusing mess. Oh, hold on. I got to throw in an appreciation for how they are telling this fucking story they are doing a phenom this is storytelling mm. chef's kiss storytelling right here by extra credits we know the truth of that uh armenian revolt and then the that the murder of that ambassador and how that was not what was supposed to happen um but kosro and kosro's side of the story they don't know that the romans know that they were the ones that knew it but they couldn't really prove it so no one else is going to believe that side of the story the mm, ooh, ooh, i am uh, all right you're impressing me extra credits cause rose court and begged him to help peace treaty or no this had gotten out of hand Cosro asked a Zoroastrian fire temple to check the auspices for him, see if God would support him making war on the Romans. The fire temple said, yep. <laughs> Which is no surprise. Historically, God generally tends to agree with kings, at least when they ask their priests nicely. And that was good because with yeah. this, Cosro could assure his court that he wasn't breaking a treaty. Mm -mm, no, he was leading a holy war. See, oh God. this entire period of peace, Cosro had been getting ready for this. After that adoption insult and the wrench Justinian threw into his succession, are you kidding me? Cosro was primed for revenge. But he wasn't just going to beat Justinian. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> he was going to humiliate Justinian and have himself a good old time doing it. Cosro swept into Roman territory at the head of a giant army, signaling that the eternal peace had officially expired. Eternity, it turns out, is really just about eight years long. But he had to move quickly because Justinian's army would not be stuck out in Italy forever. And fighting an army is way less fun than sacking an undefended countryside. So rather than taking the time to lay siege to every single town he came across, Cosro gave them a simple choice. Just surrender and pay me a bribe, or I will kill every single one of you. One town chose to resist. After that, the other towns did not. Cosro took that... Fair. ...that city bribe money and then used it to bribe Justinian's army. The soldiers appointed to the east had been complaining for years about how underpaid they were, and now here was the Shah of Iran offering them money and glory by the handful. Roman deserters poured into Khosrow's army. 
This lightning campaign through Eastern Rome had one goal in sight, Antioch, the wealthiest and largest of Justinian's cities in the east. Ever since an earthquake struck just a few years prior, Justinian had poured vast amounts of gold into rebuilding and restoring its former glory. So naturally, when Cosro swept into the city and they refused to pay his bribe, he knocked down every single building, except for the church, enslaved the inhabitants, nice. and went on Not his nice. way. Justinian was reeling, and now the quick capture of Antioch had him on the ropes. The western troops he'd been counting on had been delayed by a stubborn general pursuing personal glory over in Rome. With no army coming to his aid and cities falling left and right, Justinian did the only thing he could. He sent envoys to beg for peace. The envoys told Cosro that breaking their treaty was kind of a jerk move. What had Rome ever done to deserve such <laughs> treachery? Cosro showed them the letters Justinian had sent to his allies trying to turn them against him. And the envoys were like, all right. Yeah, that makes sense. Look, how about we give you a whole bunch of money, plus a nice big yearly tribute, if you will just knock it off and go away. Cosro agreed, and sent them running back to Justinian. Now, the Romans believed that this new treaty began the moment Cosro said yes, but it turns out, no. As far as Cosro was concerned, the treaty wasn't official until the Romans paid up, and until that happened, he was going to turn his campaign up to 11. Now, God. instead of capturing Roman cities, Cosro began turning them into his own private resorts. What? He marched all the way to the Mediterranean Sea just so he could swim in its waters like the great shahs of Iran's ancient past. No way. Sending Justinian a reminder of just how far Cosro had come and how little Justinian could do to stop him. Then, Cosro took over a town and paid them to stage a special day of chariot races, just for him. And he happened to know that Justinian was a mega fan of the Blue Racing Faction. So Cosro fixed the races to make sure that the Blues suffered an embarrassing loss to the rival Greens. He went on like this from town God to town, damn. demanding tribute from everybody and making Justinian look like a fool. He even took another swing at trying to capture Dara, that old sore spot between Iran and Rome, although once again Dara survived the attack. <laughs> then, finally, Justinian's stubborn general returned from the west with his main army. And Justinian was like, okay, screw your treaty, we are doing this. Now, Cosro still had all the people he'd enslaved back at Antioch, and he'd kind of been counting on this treaty as an opportunity to sell them back to Justinian, but now he was stuck with them. After giving it some thought, he decided that he would take them back to Iran and build them a new town. Resettling captives from defeated cities was an old Iranian tradition. It was a great way to add a bunch of talented craftsmen to your population. Many shahs before Khosro had done exactly that. But our Khosro, he liked to go above and beyond. He named his new city Way Antioch Khosro, oh my which God. translates to Khosro's Better Antioch. He Fucking recreated troll. that city down to the smallest detail, from the layout of the streets to the number of rooms in each house. Even the building materials were the same. Then, Are Cosro freed serious? the captive Antiochians and sent them to live in their new city. They were astounded. Cosro asked one random citizen if he was happy to see his house again, and the man replied, Oh yes, this looks exactly like it. Although, I do miss that mulberry tree that used to be in my front yard. The next morning, the man woke up to find a mulberry tree. <laughs> There's no way this is fucking real. Planted in his front There's yard. There's no way. Cosro's message to Justinian was clear. Your soldiers choose me. Your towns choose me. And your people choose me. Get wrecked, son. Justinian now had his army back, but Cosro still had him outnumbered. For a while, the Romans attempted small raiding expeditions, staying very, very far away from any direct confrontation. That wouldn't do. Cosro gathered his army and marched on Jerusalem, prepared to take the battle directly to Justinian's face. But while he was still marching to Antioch, a dark shadow crept into his army. Cosro's men began to burst out in boils. Their skin decayed. They began to vomit blood. A plague from the land of Egypt had stretched out its hand and brushed both armies with decrepit fingers. The Romans shrank back into their cities. Cosro and his army retreated north, looking for sanctuary, but the disease had already swept through his ranks. And worse, it had even closed its grip oh, around Cosro yes. himself. No! Not the troll! And that was Cosro Anushiro on Trolling Justinian Extra History number 4. This was a really good episode. Definitely, I think this is the best one out of the... Out of these, out of this series so far, on 
Ugh, ugh. This series so far on Kosro himself, I think, yeah. Best one so far. Uh, definitely way better than number three. Number three was the worst so far. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.